This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. Aggie, here's your food. Sister, can you hear me? Open the slot in your door. Go away, Martha. I don't want any food. But you have to eat. Open the slot. All right, it's open. I hope you've still left room between the boxes in there for me to push the food through. Go ahead and push it through. There's room for the food to get through. But you can't get in here. I won't come into your part of the house. Have I ever tried? If you do try, I'll kill you. This is my house. The money's mine, too. You love that money more than anything, don't you? I gave up marrying to get the money. Father willed it to me. If I'd never marry. And you haven't married either because you want the money when I die. Don't you? But my money is going to someone else. And you are... Yes, I know all about that. Aggie, I'll need a few dollars again. You won't go out of the house, and I have to bring you things to eat. If you weren't afraid of what would happen to you, you'd leave me here to starve, wouldn't you? Aggie, we've lived in this house together for 25 years, and I've never failed to bring you your food. You want my money, that's why. You want this house. Well, it's mine. You hear me? Oh, Aggie, won't we ever leave here? Must we live with this? Bills all our lives? Are we going to die among the boxes and barrels and rags and papers? I like the house the way it is. It's safe. It's dirty and musty and damp and it smells. But I like it. I like it. And I hate you. Now go away. Go away. And don't ever talk to me. Go away. <laughs> I'll bring you some food again day after tomorrow. Keep well, dear sister. <laughs> sister. <laughs> and now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. <laughs> I realize I'm a complete stranger to you, Blackie, but I'm sure you're familiar with the house I'm talking about. I certainly am. Uh, what did you say your name was? Uh, oh, yes, uh, Crane. Uh, well, Mrs. Crane, I think the Rogers Mansion is one of the most famous eyesores in the city. <laughs> you say you heard one of the sisters moaning this afternoon? Yes, Blackie. I was coming home from the grocery store. Oh, it was loud moaning, too, because, you know, the windows are boarded up, but I could still hear it. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was eerie. Well, you shouldn't have come to me, Mrs. Crane. You should have contacted the police. Oh, no, I want nothing to do with the police. Nothing to do with them. Uh, but uh, I was sure if I came to you, you might investigate. Uh, you could uh, creep into the house at midnight. Or... I have no right to break into the Rogers' home just because you heard one of the sisters moaning, Mrs. Crane. Oh. But I'll do what you should have done. Call the police. At what time did you hear this morning? Oh, about an hour ago. And it was so mysterious. Well, if one of the sisters is in trouble, I don't suppose it's too late to help them. Oh, isn't this exciting, Blackie? Not very. I suppose you don't want me to mention your name to the police. Oh, I'd rather you didn't. It's more mysterious this way. Oh, fine. Hello, Faraday speaking. Hello, Inspector. This is Blackie. Goodbye. Oh, wait a minute, Faraday. This isn't for your department, but I thought you might want to contact the right one. What? There may be trouble in the Rogers Mansion. There may be. There's been trouble in that house for 25 years. There's been nothing but trouble in there since those two sisters locked themselves in. Well, one of them might be in trouble, Faraday. I happen to know someone heard moaning in the building a couple of hours ago. Moaning, huh? They may be one of the old girls is dying. That's what I think, too. You better contact the emergency squad and maybe get out there yourself. Don't tell me what to do. 
Oh, I wouldn't think of it. But uh, pick me up on your way out, will you? No use, boys. No one's going to answer the door. Yeah, I guess we'd better bust the door down, eh, Dugan? Sure. Bust it down and get sued by the Rogers sisters? No, thanks. I got a wife and kids at home. I need my job on the police force. Well, here comes Faraday from Homicide. Maybe he's got an idea. Uh, how are you, Inspector? Hello, Dugan. Oh, who's the lad with you, Inspector? A rookie cop? <laughs> Thanks, Robin. I'll see you later. No offense meant, Blackie. You know that. Say, Blackie, how about you opening the door for us? You're pretty good with locks. What's the matter? Nobody answer when you knock? No, uh, it doesn't seem to be anybody home, Inspector. Have you heard any moaning? No, Blackie, not a sound. Huh. Faraday, maybe we'd better force our way in. Without a warrant? Well, if I open the door, you can always go in to investigate. After all, there was moaning in the house a little while ago. Yeah, I know. Uh, but maybe if we look the other way, Inspector. I guess we'd better. All right, boys. Okay. okay. All right. And look, uh, what's that across the street? I don't see anything. How can you be so dumb, Dugan? Maybe it's catching, Faraday. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, both of you. <laughs> Hurry up, Blackie. <laughs> Door's open, boys. I trust no one looks because how I open locks is my secret. No one looks, Blackie. It was holy man. What do you know? Look at the junk piled up there inside that door. Yeah, what is this place? A home or a warehouse? Yeah, we can't get through that pile of junk. I think we can if we crawl. Here's a sort of a tunnel under the junk. Now, follow me. I'll go right behind no, no. Blackie, boys. You better leave one of your men here, Dugan. Yeah, okay. Right. Frank, you stand guard. You right. come with me, Carpenter. Right. Hey, what was that? I tripped over a wire in here and loosened those boxes. Must have been a booby trap. Blackie, you hurt? Do I sound it? No, but it's so dark in here. Hey, Blackie, what did you run into that time? I thought like he knocked over a pile of junk. Hey, Blackie. Blackie. Inspector Faraday. Inspector! Holy mackerel, cop. Go for help. Blackie and Inspector sound like they've run into trouble. Way, Faraday. Yeah, I think so, Blanky. Brother, what fell on us? The whole house? No, but a, a room full of junk did. Uh, Guess I was knocked out for a while. I know I was. Uh, where are we now? Huh. We're around right on the other side of the pile of junk we first crawled under. Uh, hello! Hello! Hey, that's Dugan's voice. Hello! Faraday? Yeah? You all right? Frankie, will you? Yes, we're both all right. Where are you? The other side of the house. We couldn't get through that way after everything fell down. You find anything where you are? Nothing but more junk. Well, keep looking over there. Blackie and I will see what we can find over here. Meet you later. Okay. Here's the door, Faraday. Can we find this direction? Yeah, might as well. There's nothing but barrels and boxes on either side of us. Oh. Locked. Yeah. Turn away, Faraday. Okay. Brother, you sure made that fast. Oh, it was just a simple door, Mark. Well, I'll see. Another door. And lock. And more junk. Well, keep looking at the junk. Look, it's so dark in here, I can hardly see anything anyway. Hey. At least we're coming to where it's lighter. Yeah, but the junk is getting heavier. There's another door. Hmm. Look, Faraday. There's a sliding panel in this. Slide from this side? No, from the other. All right, go ahead. I'm not looking. Well, we've come all the way to one end of the house, Faraday. There's a window and... Uh-oh. I see it too, Blanky. She looks dead. She is too, Faraday. From a blow on the head. There was moaning in here, after all. Oh. The woman probably didn't die right away. I guess that's the boys. Yeah, Dugan and Dugan and Carpenter must be coming this way and are having trouble, too. I wonder which one of the sisters this is. This was Aggie, the older one, according to the pictures I remember. This is the one who owned all the property and had all the money. Oh, yeah. The one who never came out of the house. Well, when we find the other one, what's her name? We'll, uh... I think her name is Martha, isn't it? Oh, here comes Dugan. Maybe he's bringing Martha with him. Well, if he is, our case is closed. This woman was murdered. Her sister is the only one who could have killed her. Holy mackerel. I've never seen so much junk in one house at all, Mike. Hey, is that woman dead? Yes. 
Did you find the other sister in your part of the house? No, but we've been through an awful lot of junk trying to get here. The other sister isn't in the house? Not unless she's about a foot square and hiding in one of these boxes. I know why, too. Blackie, coming up here, you said a woman told you she heard moaning in this house. Why didn't you bring that woman with you? Because while I was talking to you on the phone, she skipped out. Oh, no, she didn't. You didn't bring her with you because... I no... know what you're thinking. She called herself Vivian Crane, but I think if we find her, we'll find not only the missing sister, but this mystery's missing link. Paper, mister? Okay. Paper. Paper, lady? Yes, please. All right. Here they are. They're all late. Paper. Get Hello, the late. son. Paper, mister? No. Do you know what this badge means? Yeah, you're a cop, huh? Uh-huh. Faraday's the name. Are you Robert Perkins? Yeah, that's me. I want to talk to you, son. But I haven't done yeah, anything. I... Someone else has. You're just about to benefit from it. Close up this stamp, son. See, I can't do that. One of the Rogers sisters was killed this afternoon. She left her entire fortune to you. Yes? Who is it? Telegram from Mrs. Perkins. Oh, I thought you were one of those reporters. I'm sick and tired of talking to newspaper men. Mrs. Lawrence Perkins? Yes, where's my telegram? Oh, uh, there isn't one, Mrs. Perkins, but there's my foot inside the door. Oh, another report. No, I'm Boston Blackie. Oh, I get don't... out of here. What? Is it just this minute getting here? I don't want to answer any questions. Everybody's been asking me questions today, ever since the police discovered Agatha Rogers' will. You want to know why that Rogers woman left everything to my son? That's it. Well, she was in love with my late husband before I married him. Now will you get out? If you'll just answer right. one... Uh, you first, oh, son. Yes, now the police. Well, oh, dear. Well, Faraday. Blanky, do you have to beat me to everything? Well, I don't have to. I just do. Who's the boy? Well, this policeman says I've inherited a lot of money. That answers my question. Yes, you have, Robert. But we're not going to accept it. Well, I won't let you take money from that crazy old woman. But, Mother, I know. Now, look, Robert, Mrs. Bergen. Of course you can. Martha Rogers is missing. Do you have any idea where she might be hiding? Listen, I'll have you understand we're not in any way connected with the crazy Rogers women. Never saw either of them. Now, get out of here. That means you, Faraday. And you, too. I see what you mean. Well, we've got no search warrant. Let's go, Blackie. Mother, why are you so oh, obvious? Quiet, Robert. Come on, Faraday, oh, let's go. I'm way ahead of you. We... Goodbye, Mrs. Perkins. Goodbye, and don't ever come back. Mother, I wish Robert. you would be... Well, Faraday, I suppose you know what to do next. <laughs> of course. Sure I do. <laughs> what? <laughs> And now, back to Boston Blackie. Aggie and Martha Rogers are two recluse sisters who have lived alone in a junk-filled house for 25 years. A woman who calls herself Vivian Crane goes to Boston Blackie and claims she heard moans in the house one day. Blackie and the police break into the house to find Aggie Rogers dead. Killed by a blow in the head. But Martha Rogers is missing. In her will, Aggie Rogers left the entire family fortune to Robert Perkins, a newsboy. But Robert's widowed mother says she wants no part of the money. As we return to our story, two detectives are on the Sea Island Ferry looking for the missing Martha. Uh, they're going to search the Rogers home we busted into yesterday, Carpenter. You think they'll find the missing sister? I wish they would, Dugan. Or I'm going to get picked up for staring at middle-aged women. <laughs> We've been riding this ferry for hours, and I've been eyeing them all day. Fine job for a couple of cops. Yeah. Yeah, we would have to be looking for a dame in her 50s, wouldn't we? Uh, Holy mackerel, why couldn't Martha Rogers be 19? Huh? <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> Holy mackerel, Captain, look. Huh? There's a dame starting to jump off the ferry. Let's get her. Hey, I know. Let's turn looking down at the water. Yeah, and then up at us. Yeah, let's grab her, quick. Oh, no, lady. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, Holy mackerel, Captain, we're going to be too late. Oh, no, we're not. Yeah. Yeah. Got you, lady. Go on. Let me, oh, I'll give you a hand, Carpenter. It's okay. Oh, no, please. I, let, I got me, let me jump. You don't write it. No. Holy mackerel, Carpenter. You know who this is? I got an idea. This is Martha Rogers. Let now, me, will you stop struggling if I let you go, lady? Oh, oh, oh yes. 
Yes, I might as well now. Okay. What makes you say you might as well, lady? Oh, because you know who I am and the police are looking for me. I call myself Vivian Crane, but I'm really Martha Rogers. You killed your sister, didn't you, Miss Rogers? No, no, I didn't, I tell you, I didn't. She was dead when I got home. Yeah, that's your story. Uh, Dugan, any sign of Blackie yet? No, but I'm watching for him. I want him in my office as soon as he gets here. Well, he said he'd be right down when I called him. Good. Now, look, Miss Rogers, why did you go to Boston Blackie with a story about hearing moans as you passed that house? Oh, because I didn't want to go to the police. I was afraid the police would say I killed her. Well, you did kill her, didn't you? No, I told you. I found her dead. Now, what had you been doing before you came home and found her? Oh, I'd been at the grocery. Ask them there. They'll tell you I was there. I don't have to ask them. I checked and I already know you were there. And I know at what time, too. I was there at noon. I didn't get home till, uh, well, one thirty or 2. Yeah. I, I bought a great many things, oh, so many, and the store was crowded, very crowded. Here comes Blackie, Inspector Faraday. Oh, thanks, Dugan. Come on in, Blackie. You found the missing Miss Rogers, I hear. Yeah, and I want you to have a look at her. <sighs> Is this the woman who came to you and told you she heard moans in the Rogers' house? That's right, but she called herself Vivian Crane. Oh, I had to, Blackie. I didn't want to get mixed up with the police. Yes, yeah, so you told me. Blackie, she's got an alibi for the time Maggie Rogers was killed. Of course I have. I've done nothing wrong. Well, it was foolish to try and run away, but now I'm rich. You'll have to let me go free. I get all of Aggie's money now. You don't read newspapers, apparently, so you huh? wouldn't know about your sister's will, huh? Faraday, don't release the news that you found, Miss Rogers. Huh? And as for you, Miss Rogers... I'm afraid you're due for disappointment, and the rest of us are due for a surprise. Robert, yes, sir? This is the room where Aggie Rogers was murdered. You say you've never seen this room before? I've never been in this house before, Blackie. Never even in this neighborhood, have I, Mother? Oh, of course not. I don't know why Blackie insisted on bringing you here. Right now, I don't know either, Mrs. Perkins. Blackie, my son didn't kill that Agatha Rogers. He had a good reason to want her dead. In fact, he had thousands of reasons, all dollars. Blackie, I didn't kill that woman. I never saw her in my life and never even knew about her. And I certainly didn't know she was going to leave me any money. Blackie, I never told him Aggie was in love with the man I married. I didn't want him to know about the Rogers girls or about any of this or anything. Well, he knows all about it now. Let's go into the next room. Be careful where you step, Robert. Why? Well, one false step and a barrel of junk falls down on you. This way. This passageway between these barrels. Careful. Right. Don't wander away, Mrs. Perkins. Well, I won't be far. Let's get this over with and go home. And to think people lived in filth like oh. this. Oh, oh gosh, oh, I did it. Me? Robert, I told you to be careful. Are you all right, Mrs. Perkins? Oh, certainly. You can see I'm all right. Oh, Robert, now, really, you're so clumsy. I, I'm sorry. It wasn't his fault, Mrs. Perkins. This whole place is booby-trapped. Oh, look at this. So let's keep moving. women they must have been to have a house littered with junk like this. Blackie, let's get out of here. We'll get out, Mother, but I can't get through this stuff too. Oh! <laughs> Just another booby trap. I stepped on that one. Oh, my, my. Well, we're almost out. It's getting dark. We'd better call this off till tomorrow. Oh, now must you drag my son through this horrible place again? What were you looking for, Blackie? All I'll tell you, Mrs. Perkins, is that I've found it. Blackie, if Mother and I aren't being held for anything, why have we had to sit in Inspector Faraday's office for so long? Sorry to inconvenience you, Robert. We're waiting for Faraday to bring in a certain woman. Oh, here they are now. Come on in, Miss Rogers. Oh, Maybe this time you'll talk. But I told you everything, everything. This is Miss Rogers, the missing sister, Blackie? Yes, Mrs. Perkins. But the police withheld the news at my suggestion. All right, Blackie, here's Miss Rogers. Now, what makes you think facing Mrs. Perkins and her son will make a talk? I'm sure what's about to happen will make Miss Rogers talk, Faraday. 
But I'll have to talk first. Now, go ahead, Blabbermouth. Miss Rogers, have you ever seen these people before? No, I haven't. Should I have? Well, this is Mrs. Lawrence Perkins, the woman who married the man your sister Aggie was in love with. Oh. And this is her son. By the terms of your sister Aggie's will, the entire Rogers fortune went to Lawrence Perkins at his death through his heir. The boy here is his heir, Robert Perkins. You mean my sister left all her money to this boy? All her money and all the Rogers' property. You didn't know that, did you? No, I, I didn't. I, I didn't. I, I thought... Uh, that... You thought that everything would come to you. That's why you killed your sister, didn't you? No, no, I didn't kill her. I mean... Miss Rogers, there's no question about it. Aggie Rogers was murdered for her money. If you thought the money was coming to you, you had a motive for killing her. Oh, no, Blackie, Now, let me finish and maybe make you feel better, at least for a moment. Robert here says he didn't know the money was coming to him. But he may be lying. Robert. Yes, sir? You had a motive for killing Aggie Rogers, too, you know. But I didn't kill her, Blackie. I'd never been in that house until this afternoon, and I didn't know the money was coming to me. He might be telling the truth, Blackie. I think he is, Faraday. And I think Miss Rogers is telling the truth, too. Well, partly, anyhow. What? Just whose side are you on? The right side, Faraday. And with Robert and Miss Rogers eliminated as suspects, only Mrs. Perkins is left. What? Oh, well, now you're being utterly ridiculous. I'm being utterly logical, Mrs. Perkins. First of all... As Lawrence Perkins' mother, you might have known that he was going to inherit from Aggie Rogers. I? Well, how could I have known that? Those two women were crazy living in that filthy, cluttered home. Maybe they were crazy, Mrs. Perkins, but one of them was very clever. Clever enough to kill the other and almost get away with it. Well, then don't look at me. Look at that woman there. She's Martha Rogers. Oh, I only said that. I'm not Martha Rogers. I quite agree with you, Mrs. Crane. You aren't Miss Rogers. Look, what's going on here? If this woman isn't Miss Rogers, who is? Mrs. Perkins is Martha Rogers, Faraday. Mrs. 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 Perkins is Miss Rogers, sister of Aggie Rogers, and she's the killer of Aggie Rogers. Oh, well, you have no reason to believe I'm Martha Rogers. This is only guesswork. It's awful good guesswork, though. But there's another thing that convinces me that you're Martha Rogers. Oh, there is? When I took you and your son through the Rogers' home... Who touched off booby traps? I did. Robert did. So? So. I knew Robert here hadn't been in the house before. He touched off several booby traps. So did I. But you, Miss Rogers, because you are Miss Rogers, failed to set off a single trap. It is impossible to move around that house without setting off a trap, unless you know your way around. Blackie, I hate to admit it, but I think I've been holding the wrong woman. I'm telling you that I'm Mrs. Perkins. Widow of Lawrence Perkins and this boy's mother. Yes, you are, Mrs. Perkins. But you're also Martha Rogers. <laughs> but don't worry. Even if you have led a double life, you can be punished only once. Hey, Dugan. Yeah? Remember last night when we were on this same ferry? Holy mackerel, do I? I'll say I do, Carpenter. That woman tried to jump overboard and then tried to tell us she was Martha Rogers. Martine. When she heard Martha Rogers was missing, she got the bright idea that she'd be Martha Rogers and collect her sister's dough. And if you ask me, the smart dame was that real Martha Rogers. Because she killed her sister? Ah, uh, what's smart about that? Well, holy mackerel, it was almost genius. Yeah? For 25 years, she's been known as Mrs. Lawrence Perkins. Nobody knew she was Martha Rogers, too. She never lived in the house with Aggie. Just came three times a week to bring food. Huh? She knew she wasn't getting any dough as Martha Rogers. But as Mrs. Lawrence Perkins, she was getting all the dough through her son. She tried to throw us off by pretending she didn't want the money. Listen, if you ask me, Dugan, the only smart person is Robert Perkins. He didn't do anything but tell the truth, and he got Aggie's dough. Huh. Holy mackerel, that's right. Huh. But while we're handing out bouquets, let's toss one to Boston Blackie. Brother, did he trap that murdering sister? <laughs> Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.